I do some more. Do some more. Do it for do some more. When it comes to the kings. Uh, big hopes and dreams as we cover our kings. Never cover the kingdom, but we loving our kings. And we covered your prayers as we doing our thing. Big deuce with the par, little mo on the screen. Solo or together, still do it for team. Never switch up for a dollar or revenue stream. So we always got each other. Balance out the beam. Do some mo, and that's the end of the thing. So do it for do some mo. We are Do it for do some mo. When it comes to the kings, that's my favorite show. It's never easy. But the end of the night. You look in the sky in downtown Sacramento, there's a beam into the night sky. How are we doing on a Monday night? What up, dudes? Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Morgan. Hello. I'm rooting for y'all. My goodness, man. Let's go, Kane. Malik effing monk. That guy's a dog. He's a dog. Man, we knew it wasn't going to be easy tonight. But the Kings get it done, thanks in large part to Malik Monk. And overtime, the Kings win on the home floor, 121 to 111. Woo! Uh, they're now 39 and 28 on the season, man. That was crazy tonight. I I still feel like, I feel tired like I played. Uh, yeah, I do too. I do too because the Kings like tried to take years off our lives tonight. With some of the decision making late, even when they had to leave, I know we're going to talk a lot about this, but I'm just like, can, can, can we just get an easy game for once, just for once? This Grizzlies team, man, I, I love Taylor Jenkins' teams. They play, they play hard all the time, but we'll save that. Oh, man, yeah, I I felt like I was sweating tonight. I got like, it during the game. I, no, it, well, you said you were after. I was like, that's usually my bit. Like I sweat every single game. Um, but win or lose, but yeah, this one was, uh, I found myself feeling like I was on my couch watching when really I'm at the NBC desk and I am just like, not good. Are I you was not good. Also a little sad that this was my last scheduled appearance on pre and post game on NBC sports, California. So you won't get that emotion of me next year. Cause I actually feel like I'm being honest. <laughs> I feel like I bring a little you, emotion out of you during you a game. Do. Because you do. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a little, you know, I, I'm emotional well, up there. You know what's funny? Because I feel, I feel like very comfortable around uh, Mike and Chelsea. Chelsea obviously hasn't seen as many games or hasn't been around as many games. And then Mike, he'll, like, I try to, like, keep my cool a little bit. Even though, like, he would be down. He wouldn't care. But you, it's just like... It is just pure emotion and my passion. And I just, I, I love everything. I love, I love even, even the chaos, even when my blood, like, like, I feel like it actually, there was things that happened that made me physically not feel good where I was like, am I going to have to go to the hospital? Okay. <laughs> there were some of those plays that were just jaw dropping. Jaw. The, the Keon block and then alley-oop, the land look ahead to Fox, no look alley-oop to Monk. Unbelievable. You had those exhilarating moments, and then you had the Harrison Barnes get the ball in the corner, act like he's going to drive to dunk, second guesses, puts up a floater, miss, and then it's going the other way and one. You're like, wait, an eight-point game just went down to three. But you know what's the most interesting about this is when whenever Deuce and I connect eyes, because, like, we're watching we're, – we're not talking. We're watching the game, right? Like, if there's, the, if there's a timeout, you know, then we'll start, like, talking about things, whatever. But, like, when a big play happens, it'll just be, like, just look at me at the same time and tell me – and show and let's show them, like, the look because I want to know. So, it's the Malik – it's the De'Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, alley -oop. Ready? Three, two, one, jam. I, I got to be honest. I don't even know what I do. Oh, it is – I don't know what I do. It is a straight up, like, we are talking through our <laughs> eyeballs to one another, but when we're pissed off – Guess what? Mm. It's the same exact body language and look, but it's a different it's yeah. a different thing happening. Oh my goodness. I know. I know. So many exhilarating plays. Someone in the chat was mentioning Keegan missing a couple of free throws. Keegan came into this game hitting 32 consecutive. He misses too late. You're going, is this for real? Is this is this really happening before our eyes? But Malik Monk, well, the rebound got tipped out by Sabonis. Keon got it, dished to Monk, who went, oh, I'm going hard to the rim. Uh. Deuce. I'm laughing so hard. <sighs> what? 
because <laughs> beginning, I think it was yesterday, you said, hey, um, Morgan, you should do some like Elvis parodies because they're playing Memphis. Uh, yeah, yeah. Memphis, you know. And I forgot that I wrote some down as if the Kings won. Yeah. And they're the three different Elvis songs, and they're so stupid, but I'll just do it really quick. Go ahead. Do, do people okay. want Elvis songs? It doesn't matter if you want it okay. or not. Because you're going to get an Elvis song. He's from Memphis, right? I didn't make that up, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, is he known for being in Memphis, I right? thought it was, because, uh, I mean, Graceland yeah, 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 yeah. is. We're Memphis, Tennessee, right? Something like that. But whatever. I mean, uh, close enough, right? <laughs> Uh, born in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, Alabama, moved to Memphis, Tennessee when he was 13. Yes, that's what Same thing. Okay. Okay. All right, all right, go. We're good. And I'm just, I just saw. I got panicked for a second. I saw one of the lines, and this is how bad it is because I was just like, not a lot of time, but I'm just laughing. All right. Let's go. You ain't nothing but a grizzly. Change your lineups all the time. You ain't nothing but a grizzly. Losing all the time. Well, if you can't beat us this time, then you ain't no team of mine. Kings must win. Only few games are left. But I can't stand falling into a playing game. I like that one. Yes, okay. I did one more, but I don't think people actually know. If if you know suspicious minds, we're caught in a trap. Can't dribble it out because the defense too good, baby. <laughs> I love the That's effort. It. I love the it's, effort. It's so dumb though because it was like I didn't finish any of the songs. D- Morgan, it doesn't matter. It's almost better that just little bits and pieces of songs. Oh my god, I hate myself. Give it up, okay, to Morgan Presley. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. It's my turn now. <laughs> we need some fog for Malik Mog. Woo! Pay this man his money today. Oh, God. <laughs> he is the sixth man of the year. Give him the trophy now. Woo! That's all I got. All I know <laughs> is there's fog everywhere, and this is what I need. We celebrate wins because this time of the year, every win matters. Oh, this fog feels good. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Woo. Oh my God. And. One more thing. Shout yeah. out to all the great people online, all the sweet comments, all the people at the game, sweet comments. Just thank How you. How about Ash? Thank you. Dude, Ash, Ash came through with friendship bracelets and made one for Carlin. I said, good as boy. He is a little good, good boy. boy. He's a little good boy. There's no, I see the peach emojis tonight. We're not going to say they clapped that ass tonight. I actually, I respect Memphis even more today. He only saves clap that ass when they clap that ass. When they really <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to have some fun. Let's talk about this one. Kings win. Deuce and Moe. Excuse me? Coming down. Sorry, I just need to collect myself. I just screamed. There's fog everywhere. Hold on a second. We should look up if fog can cause burping. Do me a favor, too. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. It just helps us uh, grow. Uh, Shout out to Coach Nick, who is making an appearance Oh. In our chat. He won a gold medal. Maybe we'll talk to him on night chat tonight. Do some more. Coming down. Three, two, one. Hit my music. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. The podcast that you know. Welcome into the Do Some Mo podcast, recording this on a Monday night. Time to go over the good, the bad, the ugly, but most importantly, a win for the Sacramento Kings on the home floor, wrapping up a long homestand against a tough Memphis Grizzlies team who played like dogs. Kings looked like they were on the ropes at one point. 
but a monster overtime session for Malik Monk, who scored 12 in overtime, and Sacramento escapes with a home win, 121 to 111 over the Memphis Grizzlies to improve to 39 and 28. This podcast presented by our friends over at Northwest Exteriors. Check out TrustNorthwest.com. I'm Juice Mason. That's Morgan Reagan. How you doing, Mo? So much better. I feel so much. I feel so much better than I did even like right when the game ended. I feel like the fog was needed. Um, this podcast was needed. Uh, this win was needed. I needed that game to finish with a W. Otherwise, I don't know what I would have done. Yeah, it was a wild game. And I'm not surprised at all it went this way. I don't think any Kings fan is totally surprised that the Kings had to grind it out after playing re really great against Memphis and the Lakers and a physical game against the Knicks. The Grizzlies bring something to the table. We'll talk more about them in a minute. First things first, the Kings are faced with some adversity early in this game. I actually noted Kevin Herter made a couple of plays early. I'm like, okay, that's good to see. He forced a tough Bane shot. Mm -hmm. He had a nice pick and roll exchange with Sabonis for a score. Then at the 10:09 mark, active hands, got a deflection. We go the other way in transition. Herter is attacking fouled by Bain instantly looks like he's in pain at first we're watching it going was it his hand did he break his hand or wrist he seemed like a mess he leaves the game at the 1009 mark 10 minute mark ish of the first quarter played two minutes of this game and they're calling it a left shoulder injury for Kevin and Herter I'm going thumbs up hoping that that is what it is because even if it's like a dislocation it's not good it's Definitely not mm. good, but like if it is not a broken bone after the jelly that his arm just looked within that motion when Bane went after the ball, I'll take it. I just feel so bad for him because he's been on this up and down roller coaster. And then if that is what it is, I, what does this end of the season look like for him? For him, it's just hard. Yeah, hopefully we'll find out some more information, but who knows when he's coming back? Oh. If it's the next game, I would highly doubt we'll see him in the next week, but. I don't know. I'm breaking news at this hour. Not a doctor. Uh, yeah. Not a doctor. I know. I know. So the Kings face some early adversity and Memphis. Unbelievable shooting in the first quarter. Come on. Memphis, who came into this game 29th and three point shooting, but takes a lot of threes was seven of 13 <laughs> from three. Seven of 13 from three. They end up leading this game 32 to 28 after the first quarter. It was frustrating because some of these were second chance threes in this mm -hmm. game. And that's kind of the theme from tonight where a smart man once said, oh. you can't accept in victory what you wouldn't accept in defeat. There's so much good from this game, especially from Malik Monk and the Kings playing physical. But the frustrating thing tonight, I think if you're a Kings fan, you're Mike Brown, you're in that locker room, self-inflicted wounds, that. the turnovers tonight. Oh were crushing 20 turnovers actually the official number now 19 turnovers Ooh. turned into 27 points for the memphis grizzlies more <sighs> importantly 12 of those turnovers happened in the second half that turned into 22 points for the memphis grizzlies second chance opportunities sacramento's really good at preventing these memphis had 23 second chance points they had 15 offensive rebounds in this game they're not a good rebounding team it was disappointing because that's what kept Memphis in this game. They weren't shooting the ball well at all tonight, mm -hmm. but you gave them opportunities, you gave them hope, and that's how they almost had a chance to pull off an upset. Yeah, and that's and that's what was so frustrating about it. That's where my my joy leaves me a little bit after a win is looking at so many mistakes like that. And um the turnovers were so deflating. If they were deflating for me just watching the game, I can only imagine what it was doing for them as a team. And it didn't even seem like these turnovers were sparking the Memphis Grizzlies. It feels like that's what the Memphis Grizzlies do. Taylor Jenkins' teams do. They do a good job of causing chaos. They play somewhat chaotic because they're not the best team out there. Adding Desmond Bain back obviously helps in so many different ways, but there's still a lot of chaotic nature with this team, and they play a certain way 
and the king started playing that way. Chaotic and undisciplined and allowing this team to just get those second chance opportunities as well. It just, it, it wasn't, yeah, there was a lot of bad. We did a game preview this morning on YouTube. And the thing that I, I, I mentioned, the number that jumped out to me with this team, two numbers. Memphis, 42 different starting lineups after tonight. Okay. Uh-huh. They played 28 different players this season because of all the injuries. Insane. And they're 11th in defensive rating. That, that, in that number, what does that, this is what I love. What does that number tell you about this team, this organization, the style? What does it tell you? It tells me that they have a culture of they're going to play hard. It doesn't matter who's on the floor. Boom. We have 20 different players. We're not excusing things. Their offense this year has not been good for good reason, near the bottom yep. of the NBA. But what they can control is their effort and their in games. They were just in the game against Oklahoma City the other night because of how they play defensively. And they've got some decent size. GG Jackson looks like an absolute steal. Jaron Jackson Jr. made oh a big impact God. on this game tonight. So, to me, I wasn't overlooking the Memphis Grizzlies. You have some people going, this is a horrible team. No, it's a, it's an injured team. But they have a culture that Taylor Jenkins has formed that you know they're going to compete. And they compete their asses off tonight. Sacramento, though, I felt like some of the turnovers were just sloppiness, just not being locked in. And then, from an offensive rebounding perspective, you got to rebound better. Sacramento does a pretty good job in that regard. They're a great defensive rebounding team. Yeah. That's one of the, the things they do well. Tonight, it wasn't the case. Conchar killed them. Flop, John Conchar in there. had 10 rebounds tonight, four of them offensive rebounds. I mean, that hurt you. Jemison comes in, has four offensive rebounds off the bench. LaRavia comes in and has three offensive rebounds off the bench. Those are the things that, like, if you do this against a team that has more offensive talent that's not all banged up, you're losing tonight. And what I will say about their 15 offensive rebounds, which the Kings had 15 offensive rebounds, the difference between the two was not the 23 second chance points that the Grizzlies made off those 15 offensive rebounds. It was how deflating those points were because it was the extra hustle play. It was someone flying in there and throwing it in. Or if it wasn't one person, there was at one point, it was like uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. and Aldama just flying in there at the same time, both trying to get the offensive rebound and yeah. throw it down. It just felt like those extra effort plays by this team is what could have been the deflating factor for the Sacramento Kings. And I'm just really glad that the Kings found a way to fight back. And in the, at the first at halftime, I was telling you about, Hey, this, this second chance thing's an issue. And one of the things that was hurting Memphis had eight threes at the half. Sacramento did a much better job in the second quarter defending Memphis had just 15 points and they were one of 10 from three, Mm -hmm. but it seemed like a lot of their threes were coming off second chance opportunities. And in fact, three of their first half threes came off second chance opportunities and just, those are crushers. You know, you defend well enough, you force a miss, they come flying in, get a second chance, spray three. It keeps you in a game. And remember what we were talking about at the beginning of the third, too, just going off of some of the sloppiness for the Sacramento Kings. They had five turnovers in the first maybe four minutes of that third no. quarter. Glad you brought that up. Yeah. At halftime, the Kings had five turnovers and a 10-point lead. Oh, yep. And it looked like, okay, maybe they can come out with the right approach in the third quarter and put this team away. That's struggling to score after a hot start in the first, right? You allow 15 points in the second quarter. You can hold this team in the check if you contest threes, you rebound, and take care of the ball like you did in the first half. Five turnovers in the first half. And like Morgan said, they had five turnovers in the third quarter. And by the way, in the first less than four minutes That's, of the quarter. I said, yeah. And that turned into nine points. So. It, it, those that was crushing because you got them back in the game. You got them confidence. And this team got a little juice with Bain back in the lineup. They're feeling good about themselves, especially this late in the year. They, they might be going through the motion. No, Bain's giving them a lift. He wants to play hard. It's giving Jaron Jackson a lift. They're playing with confidence. They know what they can do. And they got back in the game. I thought they did a nice job, too, dealing with Fox tonight at times. They were trapping him. But what helped in the third quarter after 
the sloppy start for Sacramento mm-hmm. is De'Aaron Fox hit three consecutive oh, threes. Yeah. Then they were playing with oh, yeah. pace, did a gr- much better job at pushing the pace uh, toward the end of that quarter. Yeah, and that, uh, you're exactly right. And that pace helped even De'Aaron Fox find a rhythm, find a flow within those shots. It allowed him to be a little bit more open because you're exactly right. A lot of those doubles being thrown at De'Aaron were very damaging. Um, it would slow, you know, their entire possession down. It would take away everything that he was trying to accomplish and take him out of the play. So uh, Grizzlies really did a good job there, but I'm glad De'Aaron was able to find a way out of that, especially with the way that it seemed like they were taking him out from the start of the game. The approach to start the third quarter needed to be way better. You can't have a, a quarter, a start of a quarter, where you're up 10, and at the 9.31 mark, you call a timeout because the Grizzlies have 10 points in 2.30. The first two minutes and 30 seconds of that third quarter, Memphis had 10 points after scoring 15 points in 12 minutes. Details. The details matter. You got to lock in with the details. And then, you know, Memphis did a good job of just keeping it close. I mean, there, there's a lot of good tonight, and I know we're leading with like, hey, you, you let Memphis stay in the game. I wanted to give some love to Memphis because of how hard they played. But this, some of the stuff tonight is like, Sacramento, you got to lock into the details. You escape with a win tonight, and there's many reasons they did. Malik Monk being one of mm. them. Sabonis had a big-time night, especially at the free-throw line. Yes. Fox got it going. And then Keon Ellis, who we're going to spend a lot of time on tonight because this guy was unbelievable again defensively in this game. And one more negative thing. I think this is what you said to me on our way back here was this Kings team, you cannot play the way you did tonight against a better team. And when I say that play the way, it's really making those mental mistakes, making those turnovers, all those big mistakes that the Kings made. If you are doing that against a good team in this league, Game over. Well, I want to talk about, and I wrote this down at the time. I wrote it down as a swing play. It's 96-88. Harrison Barnes gets the ball in the corner. Great ball movement. Keegan gets it first, puts the ball on the floor, fires it to an open Harrison Barnes, who could have taken an open three, but he decided he was going to drive. Awesome. A lane. There was a wide open lane to go dunk that shit. Instead, he kind of stops, he hesitates, and puts up like kind of an awkward floater. Weird angle. Weird angle. Mm -hmm. Missed it. If you dunk that ball, you're up 10, the crowd's into it. Instead, you put that awkward floater up, and what happens? They go down and score. Then the Kings have a turnover. Seconds later, Gigi Jackson in transition scores and won. So what should have been a 10-point lead for Sacramento Early in the fourth quarter, what's that turn into? A three-point lead. That is a crusher. So it's 90, it goes to 96-93 at the 603 mark. And uh Harrison Barnes was pulled shortly after that moment in the uh, fourth quarter. Um, I was just really disappointed by that. So that play hurt. Um, and then the other play that uh, killed me too. It's a, it, this is a close game, right? This was awful. Sabonis plays some great defense on Jaron Jackson Jr. Gets the rebound. Sabonis, I don't know what what he was thinking in this moment with the exchange to De'Aaron Fox with the defender right there. It was very, it was just a, a mental lapse. And it's a turnover. Aldama gets it fouled and won. And you're like, what? Memphis takes the lead. Luckily, he did not convert on the and one opportunity, so it's 103-101 Memphis at that moment. Then, <laughs> not executing with 51.8. Keegan Murray's been so good at the line. He had come into today, to tonight's game, with 32 consecutive makes at the free throw line. He goes one of four tonight and misses two in a row. Luckily, Sabonis tips it out, gets it to Keon Ellis, who finds Malik Monk, who jammed it to tie it at 103. But those three plays right there were just like swing plays in this game. And you had a chance to bury them. You did not. Luckily, you're able to force overtime and find a way to win this game. You know, and I know we are talking about some of these bad plays here, but you know that is what Mike Brown is looking at after a game like this, right? Like, happy you pulled out a win. Happy that you get to... 
um, hit the road after a win on your home floor. But all of these mistakes don't just go away. Like these are mistakes you have to learn from. Yep. And the mistake th to learn from is not like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm just not going to give De'Aaron uh, the ball if I think that maybe someone's right behind me. No, 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 it's not about that. It's all it is, it's like bigger picture. It's just mental mistakes late in games. Uh, late game execution. You have to be more focused than ever in that situation. And the other fun, it's not even funny. The other thing that, uh, about killed me tonight too is this is a play that ultimately didn't cost you because you're up late in overtime it's 119 111 they get the ball to Duarte and Memphis is electing not to foul for some reason they're trying to like a force a turnover and Duarte decides to back up near the midcourt line and the official one so official calls a backcourt violation luckily Mike Brown called a timeout to save his ass but that that to me is like you got to know in that moment you just you just help the defense. That's a third defender right there, and you come over and almost cost your team possession. You got to make a quick pass. You got to make a quick decision. All mental things. That I just felt like they were not focused late in game. Where somehow they pulled out the W, and probably because they are the better team. But still, they are the better team in this situation that made far too many mistakes. Yeah, like we said, the turnovers were costly. Nineteen turnovers turned into twenty-seven points for Memphis and the second chance opportunities. The rebounding too was closer than I thought. Let's talk about the good now. Hell yeah. Malik Monk. Oh, I don't know how many times we've talked about him on the podcast this year after games. I don't know where the Kings would be without this guy. He has saved their asses so many times this season and in overtime, he did it again. This guy had 28 points tonight. He had 12 points in the overtime session. He took over this game. And what a luxury it is when so much attention's on Fox. There's so much attention on Sabonis yep. to have another guy that is not only capable of knocking down some shots, capable of creating, not scared of the moment, and who's an absolute certified dog. What did you think of Malik Monk's performance, especially in overtime? I, you just said it right there. The fact, I think sometimes we overlook or don't even have that perspective everyone's always looking for the big three who are the three they want to identify something as three and usually that means three starters three superstars in this league it doesn't necessarily have to be that right you look at someone like malik monk and what he's capable of doing not only on this roster but in the nba as an nba player he is absolutely phenomenal and i think tonight what i love most was the energy that he provides not only with this joy for the game that he carries with himself all throughout a game but also through his actions and through his play for example, when he goes baseline and dunks at home, angry, passionate, mm. all the feels, all the vibes, I swear it's contagious. It bleeds out to everybody else, and I just love that he can bring that in a game like this that just felt way too close. He was fantastic. Finished with 28 points in 39 minutes of work, 10 of 19 shooting. He didn't knock down the three. He was one of six, but he was seven of seven at the free throw line. He had six rebounds, six assists in the win and after the game we had a chance to talk to him uh, on nbc sports california malik you took over in overtime what is it about these moments um, i think i've been saying it before man if you, if you love the game of basketball you want to be a competitor and you want to play the game at a high level um overtime fourth quarter times like this is, is, is where you want to step up and show you can play so um i love moments like this Malik, I don't know where this team would be without you this year. You've always played with confidence. Have you ever played with this much confidence? Always, man. Always, man. I, uh, sometimes I wasn't playing as much, so you didn't see it as much. So um, I'm just thankful Mike gave me the opportunity. Uh, Monty called me here. Wes called me here. Vivek called me here, man. I'm just thankful they gave me this opportunity. You know, Kevin Herter went down early in this one. You guys rallied. How did you deal with some of those emotions? Um... We know we don't get no calls, man, so we just try to use that as motivation um, and, and come out there and just play way harder than the teams, man, because like I said, we ain't going to get no calls, um, and, and we've been knowing that. And that's just give us a little chip on our shoulder, so we just try to go out there and show them uh, and prove them wrong. 
I got to ask you about Keon Ellis. He steps in when Herter goes down. You hope Herter is okay, obviously, but you have to get production. And Keon Ellis comes in, and man, is he closing games, making defensive plays. What has stood out to you about what he's brought to this team? Um, he's just a professional, man. Uh, he, he's been waiting his moment. Um, got a good contract uh, this year. Got signed to a contract, guaranteed contract, man. Um, that's from him being a professional. He just come in to be solid with um. Decision makers, like you said, defensive plays. Um, it's just everything, man. Not, not open shots down. So, yeah, man, he's just a, a great pro. Malik, thank you so much for joining us. So glad you guys pulled off this win. Go and join with your teammates. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. So there is Malik Monk after that Kings victory. I love him. <laughs> I mean, I, I was telling you after oh the game, God. I'm like, look, Offseason's not here yet. I'm not stressing about it at this point, but he's vital. And I, I think we talk about him so much as a sixth man. He could start on teams, though. And tonight, I mean, he's closing games for you. Tonight, late in the game, the ball was is it was in his hands. And if it wasn't, it's because he was being denied. He got denied late. Mm -hmm. And then he makes the right play. He's been awesome. Six man of the year, duh, no shit. But it, it's the emotions he plays with, the fire. He's gotten better in every way. Was how has he gotten better in your mind? He's this year? someone that you can depend on. I mean, literally, you can rely on if De'Aaron Fox is either not going to have the best game. Or if a team is going to figure out how to slow him down, right? Like, that's one of the scariest things. Because it seems like at times there's certain matchups where no one can slow down De'Aaron Fox. And when there is, it's go. you go, okay, well, who else you got? Obviously, you got Sabonis who can step up and be big. But even he can only do so much, especially against some other bigs in this league. But then when you have someone like Malik Monk who you can hand the ball, mm. push up the floor, create something not only for himself being a score first mentality, but then also being able to create and get the best wide open shot for others or put someone in the two man game like he did with Sabonis late, little pocket pass. God, he loves that thing. It's just, it's, it's beautiful. It's not only a, just a fun way of watching basketball. I, I think that's what brings a lot of us to this connection with Malik Monk, but it's so productive and it leads to games like this ending up in a W. And I think he's done such a better job defensively this year from contesting with verticality, playing physical, drawing effort, charge. Effort. Yeah, it's just so much more engaged. This is a player that if you talk to any NBA guy over the years, people who have known him for years. I was actually talking to Harry Giles when he was in town uh, before the game when uh, the Lakers were in town, and we were talking about Malik. He goes, oh, he's always been like this. He, he was talking about being playing AAU on this like all-star team that they were yeah. on together. He's like, that, this has always been him, and now he's doing it at such a high level. This guy had some roadblocks along the way in Charlotte. He had to go through, go through some difficulties he got through it and here he is playing the best basketball he's ever played he's gonna earn a big contract with it for it and i hope it's in sacramento because he is that important to this team yeah i i'm totally with you on that and i don't even want to think about what this team could look like without him but um i i think it's it's just important to really like it's you know how we, we t try and take a step back and we go Wins are really hard in the NBA perspective. We're going to celebrate all wins in Sacramento. We've seen so much shit basketball over the years. you got to make sure like, you have that mindset. I think with someone like Malik Monk, it's take a step back and don't appreciate when he's gone. Appreciate now. Appreciate the hell out of this guy. And not just because he's fun to watch, but truly his style of basketball and the way that we have seen it take a leap and develop in just this last year under Mike Brown. It's some good shit. If you have not done it yet, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. We appreciate the big crowd on late on a Monday night hanging out with us after this Kings win of the Memphis Grizzlies. Hitting the thumbs up and subscribing all does is help our channel grow so NBA fans around the world see our content. Appreciate you guys doing that. It means so much. We just passed 15,100 the other day. Let's yeah! Go. So thank you for making it happen. We appreciate you guys so much. We got to talk about someone else that Malik mentioned at the end, and that's Keon Ellis. Oh, this, this guy, 
This is why I love sports. Because it's unpredictable. <sighs> Every year we all have these bold takes or we think this is how things are going to play out. That's fun. No one. And even if you like Keon Ellis, and I know there's a lot of people who have liked Keon Ellis. We saw him play, I don't know, 25 games in person in the G League last year. I've liked his game for a long time. Even if you like what he's been able to do, did anyone think we'd be talking about Keon Ellis multiple times late in the season, in March during a playoff race, closing games, making massive defensive plays, hitting timely threes, just doing the right things out there, blocking shots? No one would have predicted this. That's what makes sports amazing. Keon Ellis has been a game changer defensively for the Sacramento Kings. And I don't even think someone, you know how I, I think every player has the most confidence in themselves and everything. I don't even think someone like him would have predicted this. And the reason why I say that is because of what has been in front of him, right? The challenges, the pieces, the players. And it was, when are you going to get this opportunity? The opportunity really showed itself in, I forget which game, and it was garbage time. They were losing. I believe that was earlier this year. Was, was that in New Orleans or Houston? I don't know. One of the games that got blown hey, out. Hey, it was one yeah. of those games. And within that opportunity, he showed up. He looked good. And it showed something else to Mike Brown that, it, you know, he couldn't really see in practice that he got to see on the NBA floor in those NBA minutes. And then finally, you saw it him get sprinkled into games here and there, little opportunities, DMPs, then all of a sudden would see some random starts. He is 6 and oh, the Kings are 6 and 0 oh when he has started games. Morgan. Yes. Starting in January. Yes, good job. He did not play anything but like spot minutes really for the first month of the year. I mean, he's DNP three times in a row. Oh, the Kings are getting blown out. He got thrown there in New Orleans, played very little minutes against the Pistons and the Hornets, got 10 minutes and a blowout to Philly. Then he is not playing mm. in like 10 straight games. Then he gets in late in a loss to Cleveland for three minutes, did not play. Then he gets some garbage time minutes against the Pistons. A little bit more against OKC when they're down big. The guy was playing garbage time. And what ended up happening is he got a chance in that Minnesota game when he got the start. And man, did he come in and make things happen for Sacramento Never in that back. win over the T-Wolves. The only time... He didn't play after that. The next game against the Bulls, which we were after going, why would he not be able to play? Since then, the guy has been in there. And he's in there, even with injury, because he's earned his way yep. into the rotation. Since coming into the rotation in March, he's leading the team in steals. He's leading the team in deflections. This guy's 6'4". He's blocking shots at the rim. Amazing. But he's contesting and blocking shots tonight. Keon Ellis... Had five blocks tonight. This guy is a menace. Five blocks, one steal, seven boards. And you go, okay, well, is he doing anything on the other end? He finished with five points. But we've seen some other games where he's contributing, knocking down the threes that he didn't need to in this one when Malik started going off. Obviously, that but was until the overtime. You don't, you don't need a ton of scoring from Keon Ellis. Sure. You need him to make plays defensively. And... On occasion, hit an open three, knocked a catch and shoot three. Shots. He knocked down a three tonight. He finished at the rim tonight. He doesn't need a ton of shots to be productive. That's probably been one challenge for Sacramento this year is trying to figure out the dynamics in the starting lineup with Herter and Barnes. Their roles have been a little different this year because Sabonis has taken more shots. Mm -hmm. Fox has taken more shots. Keegan, Keegan is. And some of those, sometimes those guys struggle to find their footing, right? Well, Keon isn't worried about getting shots. He's going out there to play defense, and he, he does the right things. He's in the right spots offensively and defensively. He's always in the right spots. He understands his role, but without being scared of, of expanding what his role needs to be. If he needs to be more aggressive on the offensive end, and I'm sure if Mike Brown said be more aggressive on the offensive end, he would say, yes, coach, and do it, and figure out some ways. I mean, it's just like you said, in the games that we saw in the G, when he started being aggressive and putting the ball on the floor, it was like, 
oh, he can do more offensively. He's not just this defensive guy. So you know it's there, and now it's just it's just about experiencing these NBA minutes and getting the touches where you need to get the touches, doing what you need to do on the defensive end. And he's doing that plus some, in my opinion, on that end of the floor because it's helping the entire team. Just a, he's a good team defender. He had to deal with Desmond Bain. Oh, I saw Bain walk on the floor tonight before the game. I'm on the court, and this guy's so jacked. He may have T-Rex arms, but Desmond Bain Bulldog. is jacked. He looks like a football player. And Bain loves to attack. He got by Keon a couple of times, but Keon battled. There was a several times where he was bumping him, stripped him, the blocks he had tonight to have five blocks. So Keon plays 33 minutes, a career high, 33 minutes. He had five points. He had five blocks and a steal and who knows how many deflections. It, it's it's changed things for Sacramento. And now, especially with Herter, who knows how long he's going to be out. Keon got the start in the second half of this game. I imagine he's going to start going forward. This is a tremendous opportunity. And it, it gives Sacramento a different look. I think he helps Fox defensively too. He motivates the other guys. I love what he brings to this team. Well, what I love about it, too, now that they might be in this situation, not knowing what's going to happen with Kevin Herter, and I was always one of the people that would say, hey, play Kevin Herter. Keep keep going. Like, we're this late into the season. G keep going in that direction, but just have him on a shorter leash. If you don't like what you're seeing, if he's not producing on either end of the floor, that's when you go about it. Now you're in this situation where you don't have to go, oh, God, do we just have to move Malik Monk up there because we don't trust our depth or anything else? Nope. You got someone in Keon Ellis who has proven in these starts in the NBA with this team that he can make, he can help create winning basketball. Dude, it, it, he's just, I challenge you. So next time you watch a game, Kings fans or NBA fans, just watch Keon Ellis on defense sometimes. Not only when he's defending the ball. I'm talking about off ball. He's so active. He is everywhere. He doesn't take plays off. So fun. He's such a good communicator. He got caught last game. He got caught last game oh. by Brunson late. You know, Mike Brown actually talked about that before the game. And he goes, look, Brunson got him. He was worried about a screen coming. He knows we have a, a special ward for if that screen is coming that we communicate he, he looked, and Brunson did what a vet does. Blew Brunson, by him. Brunson kept saying, come on, come, yeah, 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 come over, come on, and just, like, faking him out. He knew exactly what he was doing. Just well done by Brunson. But it's not like it shook Keon Ellis' confidence, comes back in this next game, you and learn. plays his ass off. Absolutely. So we talk about Monk. We talk about Ellis Sabonis, his 50th consecutive double-double. There have been three players since the NBA-ABA merger to have 50 consecutive double-doubles. Moses Malone and Kevin Love, who holds that record at 53. Sabonis is at 50 now. He, what a tough game. 25 points, 18 rebounds, 5 assists. He had 2 blocks. He wasn't efficient, which is a rarity for him. 6 of 17. They were throwing everything. They were physical with him. Jaron Jackson Jr. made an impact with some of those blocks he had. But Sabonis got to the line 15 times in this one. This guy was 13 of 15. The King shot 81% at the free throw line. Since that game in Minnesota where they missed some free throws, in the month of March, Morgan, they are shooting near 80% at the line. That's top 10 in the NBA after being dead last. Ah. Sabonis was a big reason. He's going to get to the line sometimes. Has to knock him down. He was 13 of 15 at the line tonight. And he had to deal with Jaron Jackson defensively. I thought he made some great plays defensively to make life more challenging. What stood out to you about Demonis Sabonis? The free throws. The free throws. 13 of 15. I thought, you know, out of all the times we talk about this team as a whole wasn't focused on the little things throughout this game, and especially there at the end, and Domas making a huge mistake, especially trying to get that ball to De'Aaron after making a huge yep. defensive play. Like, those mental lapses, but still found a way to make his free throws when that was something he has been struggling with uh, all year long. So that was great to see. But then also, when you look at the rebounding deuce, you go, he had 18, and... How many times we still saw this 
Memphis Grizzlies team just crashed the boards, um, especially on the offensive end. We said 15 offensive rebounds. The Kings finished with 15 as well. The 15 by the Grizzlies just felt so much more damaging. And I feel like it's because Domas was doing such a great job of doing his job. Yep. And then when everyone else wasn't finishing off theirs, it's like, what am I doing this for? What are we all doing? We've got to all help each other out. So Domas just being a force down low, obviously. And then when you look at even just him defensively with those two blocks, I thought he was battling and I just love the way that he's just been an anchor all year long but you're seeing it more and more in these last couple of good defensive game well better defensive games for the Sacramento Kings where they're just they're talking communicating with one another better and Domas is a big part of that he had seven offensive rebounds tonight for the Kings too oh my god seven of the 15 seven of the 15 okay. offensive rebounds it's it's insane and we mentioned the 50 straight double doubles yeah. This guy has 63 double doubles in 67 games. <laughs> like what? There's been four games this season where he hasn't had a double double. And that seems like 10 years ago now. I mean, it's it's pretty remarkable what we're seeing from him this season. And, you know, he had a battle in this one. Jaron Jackson, by the way, on the other end, yeah, he finished with 25 points. Jaron Jackson was eight for 27. Eight for 27. Uh, he was one of six from three. There was one play where Sabonis had a fantastic contest where Jackson left his feet mm -hmm. to shoot the three and at the last minute passed it because Sabonis' hand was right there. Yeah. His contests were fantastic. Should also mention Keon Ellis. We're talking about his blocks. His contests have been great too. That's been a point of emphasis for the Sacramento Kings contest. Memphis got off to that hot start. Hot start. The hot start. They got out to a hot, hot start. Shot, a hot start from three-point land. They end up shooting 34%, which is right at their average uh, 13 of 38 from downtown in this game. When they started shooting really well from three-point land, it was like another one of these. And you see how that can also set a tone. It's in some ways, I go, Kings will figure it out. But we've seen so many games where the Kings are playing bad three-point shooting teams and they don't figure it out. And in fact, the, uh, the other team, the opponent, just gets hotter and hotter from three. So it was good that the Kings found a way to make sure they were contesting, uh, rotating over, just the hustle was there a lot more, getting a hand in the face. And it, we talk about Keon Ellis playing a lot more in March, the Kings defense being better in the month of March, mm -hmm. the updated numbers tonight in March. The Kings... Six and three in March this year. Okay. Their losses, Houston, pretty ugly. The Chicago game they should have won. Mm -hmm. And then the Knicks. In that stretch, their offensive rating, any guesses what it would be in the month of March? Um, I'm going to guess 15th? 7th. Wow. Their defensive rating in the month of March. Is it like ninth? 6th. Whoa. Net rating is 6th. That is a recipe for a really good team. If you are top seven in offense and defense, you got something going. So it's encouraging at this point, even with some of the disappointing losses. We mentioned the Houston. Yeah. The Knicks one is yeah. whatever. You lost that game, but you played competitive. hard. Competitive. The Houston-Chicago game, kind of annoying. But look, dude, you're six and three. This is playoff time. You got to win. You got to find a way to win. It doesn't have to be pretty all the time, but you need to compete. And the Kings right now, late in the season, are playing their best offensive basketball of the year and some of their best offensive basketball of the year. That is encouraging. And it should be noted that coming into tonight, that was with Kevin Herter shooting 25% from three in the month of March. That was with Keegan Murray shooting 25% from three in March. So it hasn't always been pretty from three with this group but they're competing their asses off defensively, and that's why they're in games. Yeah, it, it's it's been nice to see that they're f figuring it out better late than never, but also at the same time, like, this is the best time to figure it out as a team, right, is toward the end of the season. Um, you know, 
you're dealing with some adversity this season too with the injuries that we talked about. Trey Lyles being out, Kevin Herter just getting hurt, Sasha Vazenkov, who did practice today and full was participant. a full participant. I shoot and, around. And yeah, pr- yeah, yeah, and he d- he ended up not playing in the game. He's still out for the game, but it's encouraging to see that you might see Sasha back out there as they're losing some guys. So that's good to see as well, and hopefully these numbers and this style of basketball can continue in this direction. Keep playing with this effort, yes. this fight. And it, when Keon does his thing, we see it. We just talked about Malik Monk's effort. Fox is bringing it defensively. Keegan Murray defensively this year has been awesome. And Sabonis plays hard all the time. That can lead to winning basketball. So that the definitely encouraging as the Kings at the road for the three games against Toronto, Washington, and Orlando. Keegan Murray had a double double tonight. Yeah, and Keegan that that he is not shooting the ball well from three this year. And this month for sure, but the numbers have dipped. And there's still time for him to get hot and hopefully he can finish around 37% from three this year. That would be nice. He was two of eight from downtown in this game. I'd be more concerned if Keegan Murray was playing the defense of last year. I'd be more concerned if Keegan Murray wasn't rebounding consistently like last year. Yeah. Keegan Murray's still playing. Keegan Murray is defending and he is rebounding at a much better and much more aggressive level this year and that's what's encouraging i i still trust that like hit the shot's gonna drop it's just not dropping right now i, I don't know what to say you I know mean, I, he may not be a 40 percent shooter but i don't think he's a 35 percent shooter no either. and and it, it's been nice to see that there's been other production on the offensive end obviously when you think of someone like malik monk but you still want keegan to be this big threat and i think sometimes especially early on in this game i saw where he'd put the ball on the floor like he was going to go. But his thought process is not to be, is not to shoot first. It's, okay, someone on me, I'm just going to pass it off. Yeah, Should he's got to be aggressive. He came out aggressive why that, tonight. But that would be the way he talks in his mind too. But He did come out more aggressive looking for his tonight. So, a few plays that I noticed, when especially when they were the basket was closer to us, I noticed him going down the lane, and then he would stop, look around, and then he would take a shot, and it's because he hesitated on that shot. And then I saw yeah. another play where he took a mid-range shot, no hesitation, just missed it. And I'm like, great, that's okay that you missed it. That's the type of shot you want to see. And then he had two, then he eventually had two dunks on that side. So, there was a lot of good being done by him even when he was missing but i did notice the few and again that's gonna happen but i don't even want to see those few from him it's like he's just so good that he doesn't need to have those few hesitations when he's aggressive it usually leads to good things aggressive and decisive is probably the best way to put it with, with keegan and i i think that's been totally inconsistent with him against the knicks you know why he didn't play late in that game because he's passing up shots. He was even, he was even looking to score. Keegan needs to work on that confidence to go at guys. Yeah. I'm seeing him do it defensively, which is super encouraging. That same kind of mindset, use your body, use your strength. You worked on this. Go do it on the other end. And he's got to continue to work on his handles next offseason to be, you know, way more confident in that sure. regard. He's shown so much growth in like every aspect of his game, but there are definitely room. It's, there's room to grow, and the thing he can control the rest of this year is remaining aggressive and decisive. You're right. Being a force. Don't hesitate, nope. man. No, nope. you're good. I saw you drop like how many threes did he hit that game? It was insane against it, Utah. Like when he's he not thinking out there and just playing hard. And some of his missed shots are better than some of the other shots that are generated on the offensive end. And, um, or just even when the ball's moved around, it's an open three. It's like, Keegan, you're, you in the midi, you in the midi, like, let's do it. Just go. Like, it's a good look for you. It's a good look for the team. Just don't lose that confidence. Don't hesitate. Be decisive. Make the move. De'Aaron Fox tonight finished with 23 points, 10 assists. Seven rebounds. He had six turnovers as well. He was asked about that after the game. He goes, well, I got tackled a lot. But then he said he could have been better in that regard. He ends up eight of 16. He was four of seven from three. So that was good to see. Three of four from downtown. And then hit the shot. That got him to overtime. That mid-range automatic jumper. 
Mm. It, it's funny. You, you see him get to a spot, and you're like, that's going in. And it absolutely went in. That was a massive shot from De'Aaron Fox. And I felt like his third quarter barrage of threes was massive for the Kings. Oh, my God. It was beautiful. I think it was massive for him and his yeah. confidence as well. I mean, as soon as he knocked down the first one, then he took the se second. Everyone went, you know, wild and then the third one was on the opposite side of the floor mm. and it was just beautiful i i loved uh that he was able to take over and that they were all three point shots you know like you said he was four seven from beyond the arc just a much better number right there it's not like he was settling all game long and he was seeing a lot of doubles he was seeing a lot of pressure and i love that he was saying he was getting tackled but going into the playoffs if that's what's going to happen how can he manage that how can he find a way to push through i think domas has done a much better job this year of being able to fight through some of the bullshit that goes down <laughs> yeah. underneath the basket i think De'Aaron has done a much better job this season as well but you've seen a few of these last physical games and especially since it feels like the officials aren't calling as much that it's not going to always go his way he's got to fight through they just played back-to-back -back games against two really physical teams like <laughs> Memphis gets after it. Yeah. Good defensive team, especially cons all things considered. And then New York, which New York, again, won tonight on the road against the Golden State Warriors. They're on one right now. They're feeling They did that without OG, too. Wow. So okay. this Knicks team is no joke. And so I I'm glad in some ways that the Kings are experiencing some of that. you got to fight through that. And it it's hard sometimes. Oh, I was looking so back hard. at that New York game because we talked about the defense. Oh, they got shut down. I, I said to you after that game, too, I felt like they missed some open shots. In that Knicks game, they were 6 for 22 on wide open threes. Yep. So they missed shots, too. They, they missed, make, Well, they missed shots, but they also, they, yeah. like, you know, on some of those wide open threes, sometimes that pressure of, of feeling this defense that has been scrappy all over the place in your face, being physical, you're like, oh, shit, got to get this shot off. Oh, shit. Like, it still changes your wide open shot even sometimes. So, you got to make sure to just continue to play your game. Shout out to our guy, Frankie Cardicelli, over at Sacktown Sports. He put this out. According to Stathead, Keon Ellis is the first Kings guard in the Sacramento era since 1985 when yeah. the team moved here to block five shots in a game. Keon Ellis. I love... How, how many times have we talked about need length, need length, need length? He is... A lot of that length, right? He's not yeah. the tallest guy out there on the floor. Plays bigger than he is. Exactly. What he provides with just his wingspan and just the way he gets his arms up, the discipline there. I love that stat. Good job, Frankie. Or stat head. Well, Frankie got it from stat head, so shout out to Frankie for putting it out there. Uh, we mentioned Keon Ellis off the bench tonight. He's going to probably be in the starting lineup going forward. Monk was awesome off the bench. I thought Alex Len even had some good moments tonight contesting shots. He had two blocks. He, had oh, yeah. he finished with six points. Three rebounds. He had four fouls, including a flagrant foul. He was called for in this game. He was two of two in 13 minutes. Chris Duarte played 17 minutes. Hey, Chris Duarte, after a rough start, there was moments this year I went, dude, I, d d does he belong in the league? Yeah. Like, it looked tough for him. And he came in, hit a couple of threes right away. He just seems like Big he's threes. playing a little more confident out there offensively and then defensively more controlled. So, you know, he's a guy that's probably going to get some opportunity here. And especially if, if Herter is miss, missing some extended time, Lyles is still out too. I mean, next guy up, and he's going to get some opportunity. He's just got to keep continuing to play under control, like you're saying, with that poise. Because when he stays focused, even just on his body, not be, not just flailing everywhere and uh, being too aggressive on the defensive end where he's not controlling where his hands are going or his feet moving laterally. So if he can do that and make in productive minutes like he even did tonight, it's great to see. One other thing, though, one other note I wanted to make when you brought up Alex Len, there was a few times tonight when I mentioned this to you, even uh, it was a pick and roll. They threw the double, whether it was on Monk or Fox a lot, yeah. A lot on Fox. And Blitzing let's say him. they threw that. Alex Len would roll all the way to the basket. And I'm like, where's the short roll? Given mm. the, I, I, and I know it's know your personnel and you don't want to just give Alex Len the ball high up, you know, uh, like a, at the high post all the time, but he's not a threat anyway at times. So if you get it to him, he can at least make the right decision. Maybe to if, if a defender comes up on him, he can make the next pass or just an overhead pass to the next open man. But either way, 
I just needed to see him square up a little bit more or maybe that ball get to him. But even if not, he needs to square up and look at the basket I for agree. a hot second. Yeah, because I, I felt like there were multiple instances instances tonight where Fox was hesitant when he got the trap. It wasn't a quick decision. I don't know if there was like not a trust. I don't know if it was Len not being in the right spot or just how Memphis was defending. But it was tough. It was yeah. tough. They were throwing it. They were throwing so many guys at uh, Sabonis and in the paint too. I didn't see the points in the paint. Kings finished with 50 points in the paint. It was a grind. 25 of 46 in the paint. Kings allowed 48 points in the mm. paint. So not a not a bad number there. Uh, on the night, Sacramento ends up shooting 44%. They shot 31.4 from three, 11 for 35, but were 26 of 32 at the free throw line. They end up out-rebounding Memphis 59 to 49. They had 30 assists in the game, but those 19 turnovers, they had seven steals. 10 blocks in this game for the Kings. Wow. Half of those by Keon Ellis. Insane. Love to see it. Uh, also insane is all the people hanging out with us tonight in the chat. Uh, a couple of great messages in this one from, I believe it was Living Proof in there, who noted that Keon Ellis is wingspan to 6'9". He's a long player. Okay. He also noticed that it's crazy because Wilt Chamberlain actually holds like the all-time record for consecutive double-doubles. Yeah. The one that's referenced all the time is since the ABA NBA merger. Yeah. So Kevin Love has that record, 53, because no one's going to touch Wilt's number of 227 consecutive double doubles. 227? Is that the number that was in here? There's no way. Insane, There's just dude. no physical possible yeah. way. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> just wild. Uh, uh, Morgan, who would be your rock and soul player of the game? Malik Monk. Without hesitation. Without hesitation. No Keon Ellis. Love, I know huh? you want to give it to Keon Ellis. I give it to Malik Monk. Uh, in the chat, I said who was the player of the game in the poll question. 72% of people who have voted say Malik Monk. Hey. 20% give it to Keon Ellis, the rock and soul player of the game tonight. Malik hey. Monk. Dude. And I love that parenthesis. 12 points in overtime. 12 points in overtime. 12. Took over. The Kings. Scored 16 points in overtime. Mm. 16 to 6 in that overtime session. Incredible. My God. Just dominance. Needed to see it. That's, you know what? That allowed everyone, too, to leave not in pain. Because, <laughs> because I truly feel like it would, it would have just been like, oh, they had to grind this one out. But when Malik Monk just started going off in overtime, it was like, okay, this is giving everyone life. Well, if you're ever going to a Kings game or if you want to go somewhere for a Kings game, go check out Rock and Soul Diner in Sacramento. Get breakfast, lunch, dinner, drink specials galore. Six blocks away from Golden One Center. Amazing food. It's a local business. They support us. We support them. You should support them too. Malik Monk, our Rock and Soul player of the Game. Hey, hey, hey. Amazing stuff. I, I do think, too, I, I want to reemphasize something because, you know, th this happens, you know, and I, I get it. There, There's people who just watch Kings games, right? You're a Kings fan. People have lives, right? They don't watch NBA games all the time. What? I, they have, you know, like no. kids. They have families what's and jobs. A, what's a cad? So they're, Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, they just watch Kings games. And I think there's a fan at halftime. I think his name was, I want to say it was Chris. I, I met him before the game. And it was like midway through the second quarter. He's like, I can't, we should be blowing out this team. I can't believe this. And I, I called him over and said, hey, you know what Memphis's defensive rating is? He's like, like what, 29th? I'm like, 11th. <laughs> and I think, I think so many people do this, right? Like yes. we, we look at records, 23 and 46. We did the same thing with the Spurs. Yeah. These teams don't win games, but this is the, this is the damn NBA. Mm -hmm. You got to be locked in. And th the Grizzlies are not the Pistons. They're not the Wizards. The Spurs aren't the Pistons or Wizards or Hornets. These teams may lack some talent at times, but there's enough there. And I, you know, getting Desmond Bain back is big. We mentioned Jaron Jackson being a threat too, but the guy I love on this team and Memphis is frightening to me going forward yeah. is Gigi Jackson. Oh my goodness. He had 22 points, seven rebounds, eight of 13 shooting four of eight from three great size. I mean, look to start this game. They threw him on De'Aaron Fox. He's got length. He's not scared. He plays with confidence. Tough. This guy's a steal and a half. No real tough. And by the way, with you not only saying 
for the Grizzlies. You know, you can't always just look at the record and be like this, this, and this. And I know everyone wants to say the Kings should win this game. They should. Yes. But but here's my only pushback to that. Whenever we say this about the Sacramento Kings, I feel like a lot of people, because a lot of people they will only watch the Kings and they're not watching yeah. NBA or something, which is absolutely right. fine. But what I will say is sometimes I think everyone's like, shouldn't the Kings be this really good team in this league right now? And it's not like the Kings have won all these championships in the last couple of years. It's not like the teams have fit. This Kings team has figured it out in the last couple of years. They figured it out for the first time last season. And now it's bled into this season and it's supposed to get better. And it has gotten better, right? It's gotten better in a lot of ways, but there's also been some things that you still wanted to see get better that didn't. I guess my point to that is sometimes I feel like the way that we talk about the Kings yeah. is that they should be like championship status. They're not there yet. Just killing everybody they're and not, they're just not they're there They're not good yet. enough yet. Okay, I'm really excited for this, and I think the chat's going to be excited for this. We have not talked to this person. I don't know the last time we talked to this person. It's been way too long. We've missed him. We had people commenting, where is Nick? I miss Nick. Let's welcome him back to the show, the gold medal winner. Coach Nick is Yay! in the building. Coach Nick. I know. Wait, 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 Nick, Nick. First things first. Where have you been? I don't know. I... I have been on for a few days, but you know, no, a few day, Nick, we have not talked to you in like a month. We missed you. Yeah. Did you miss me, Morgan? Yeah. <laughs> I missed you, Nick, but I'm looking at your hardware right there and I see a gold medal. So were you too busy winning gold medals? Yeah. And are you proud of me, Morgan? I, Nick, and I am so proud of you, but I think Deuce wants to tell you that he's proud of you too. Nick, I'm proud of you too. I hope that matters to you. It's not just Morgan. Middle. Why not? Here's my question. What do you win a gold medal for? Uh, for, for basketball and my basketball tournament was at Fossum High School. And guess what? what? I saw a Kings fan there. You saw a Kings fan there? How do you do in the game? Do you know how many points you got? <sighs> it's, it's hard to keep track. You're Mr. Double Double. You're like Sabonis. <laughs> Why not be Sabonis? Why yeah. not be like Doma Sabonis? Well, Nick, I'm... You know, I wanted to say, you know, today, you know, today, uh, I wanted to say today that I have thanked, I have thanked my bus driver for doing this hard work for me because my bus driver has taught me what uh, learning disability is about, yeah. you know, not drive a car to be able to bus travel. That's really cool. He taught you that? Well, I, I got to, I get the bus travel now. I get to be a bus traveler. That's so cool, Nick. I'm I Nick, I'm proud of you for that. And I'm proud of you for winning a gold medal. You're being a good teammate out there. And I know you're happy about this Kings win tonight. Yes, I am. Why not? Why not be happy about this Kings win? You know, what's also great, Nick. You always say, why not play defense? This team's playing defense. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, uh, Nick. Uh, I know you miss Morgan. Did you, you know, did you miss Deuce? I miss Deuce too. Oh, yeah. yay! All right. Anything else you want to say to the? You have fans watching too tonight. What What is your message to them? I want to say, you know, I want to say, well, we're, I'm glad that we got to win tonight. And. Why not light the beam? Why not light the beam? Morgan, can you do this song tonight, please? Anything for you, Nick. I'm just so happy you're back and you you won a gold medal. You ready? <clears throat> yes. Fire the laser! Oh. <laughs> Is that what you wanted? Yes. Okay. All right. All right, Nick. Well, hey, we haven't said this in a while, Nick. Sleep beams. Sleep beams, Morgan. Sleep and, beams. And, and Deuce. Nick and Deuce. And Deuce. I wanted to thank you guys for being part of my life. Oh, of course. Thank you for being a part <laughs> of our lives. We've missed you. You haven't called in a long time, so. Deuce ammo. Deuce ammo. They, they tell, tell you what, what they know. Appreciate you, Nick. Sleep beams. Sleep beams, Nick. Sleep beams. <laughs> we needed that. I think we all need that. I. We're getting a lot of comments recently. Where's Nick? Is he doing okay? We haven't heard from him. And I, I was 
concerned too because we haven't. It's like this guy would call every single game. Well, he wasn't even doing anything in the Discord? Rarely. I didn't really see much. Okay. Okay. Well, there he is. He's alive and well and winning gold medals. No big deal. Shout out to our favorite coach, coach Nick. Nick. What was your Sharif Jewelers moments of the game? Oh, my God. This one's easy. As I wear <laughs> my awesome watch <laughs> I that I borrowed from Sharif Jewelers today to wear on TV. Dude, it looks so you good. You need a watch. You need jewelry. You want to propose to someone. Go shop local Sharif Jewelers. They've been in the Sacramento community forever. They're amazing, and they're Kings fans. Anyway. And always at Kings games. Sharif Jewelers, moment of the game. Uh, uh Gosh, I'm going to go with the block to yes. De'Aaron. Uh, so it was Keon block. Alex Lynn gets it. Outlets to De'Aaron. Yep. Pushes it up the floor. Is gonna, about to go up for a layup. Oh, no. He throws it up in the air for Malik Monk. Alley-oop dunk. That was the play. The, I, there was no, right? I mean. It ha- there was there was other like Malik Monk moments where I was like, yes, the um, the baseline jam. I just love the emotion out of it. And I even love the moment that he had that two man game with Sabonis where he's dribbling up top pocket pass to Sabonis and then Sabonis throws it down late. Uh, I believe that was in overtime as well. But either way, I mean, Malik Monk just being dominant in overtime could be in its, its own moment, but. De'Aaron to Monk, that connection every yeah. single time is just so exciting. That other Malik dunk ca- came when he, after a key on block again, right? And Malik got it in the corner baseline and drove strong with the two-hand flush. It That's was one. incredible. That's, one, I mean. That's the moment. That that has to be the moment. I don't think there is a better moment than that in that situation. I was trying to find to see if there was a, a call of it just to... But um, no, that was a lot of fun tonight, Morgan. Yeah. And then also noting that Malik Monk, you know, took over overtime. That yep. was huge. Good stuff. Um, let's see. A lot of people giving Nick some love tonight. We also had some super chats that we got to make sure. I know. Of. And we do need to shout out Northwest Exteriors. You need windows. Why should you go to Northwest Exteriors? Well, they can save your life. I was vitamin D deficient and it's because I wasn't <laughs> going with my, that. I wasn't keeping my blinds open because my windows were from the 1940s. Then I got Northwest exterior windows and now they have UV protection. So I keep my window, my blinds open all the time and I'm already getting healthier. And seriously though, not only can it save your life, it can save you money. It can keep in the heat, keep in the cold, whatever you need all year round. So go to their showroom in Rancho Cordova. You can go to their website too, trustnorthwest.com. Get new windows. It'll make your house sexy oh it'll increase the value save you money on energy and you gotta trust the experts at northwest exteriors because they are simply simply the best best. trust northwest i didn't get it that's cool (laughs) what do you have a hearing problem can you not hear that you did not get that being Uh, can i be honest what I just need some time to practice. It's been a minute, and I, I had the yips with it. Deuce. I have the yips. I do. I have the, hey, I'm overthinking it, and that's what it is, and we're going to move on. Okay. I do such great things all the time. I just can't do this one. Do you want me to tell you that no. I'm proud of you? Like, come on. No. You got it. You're uh, great. All right, next up for the Sacramento Kings, Morgan Reagan. Hitting the road. <laughs> Hitting the road. Was that a raptor? Yeah. That's what a raptor sounds like? Well, they faced one. Uh, they faced a T Rex today in Desmond Bain. <laughs> well, he's got short arms. I get it. Like it's just so. It's such and a. And now stretch. they play a raptor. What? That's not a stretch. It's a stretch. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, it's kind of dumb. Was that a stretch? Let me know. <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, uh, on to the Raptors, where they're the- not playing good basketball right now. They've no. lost nine of ten. They're near the bottom in offense and defense. And I, I've already heard this. Heard, hey, guys, you know, don't sleep on Toronto and Washington. It's a back-to-back. Mm. Okay. Memphis plays hard. These two teams are playing next. Yeah. Are not playing good basketball right now. I'm not saying you disrespect them. I'm not saying you overlook them. But you need to handle your business. Because you're better than them. You're better than it's both of these say. teams. Okay. So you got to win the next two. I'm not even talking about Orlando yet. 
Toronto's not playing good basketball. Washington hasn't played back good basketball all year. This has to be a complete focus, even if it's a back-to-back. Toronto, you got to deal with customs going out. I get it. It's challenging, but go win those games. Also, this is what I'll say to you, too. Will, now are you to the point of not saying, with this Kings team, of not saying, you know, you got to get things done so you're sitting, guys. Because we're seeing, it's not it's not even about getting things done so it's you're sitting, guys. Games. Exactly. And it's about winning games the right way. And I don't give a shit if, if, if it's winning games the right way by it just having a 15-point cushion there. Yeah. But, like, let it be there strong. You know, where tonight it was like there was a 10-point cushion at times and at the half, but it never felt strong. So you want to make sure that you have that. I don't care if it's about um, being like, look, you want to make sure to give garbage time minutes so everyone can just get off the bench and play. Nope, just win these games. Play basketball the right way. Obviously, those things would be amazing. It but would you just be. need to win games. Toronto coming in. Has uh they've been off since yesterday. They lost to Orlando one eleven to ninety five. They've lost now three, four, five, six, seven games in a row. They're playing a lot of young guys right now, right? Um Anthony Black, Grady Dick. Okay. No one needs to do a jersey exchange with Grady Dick after ever, that game. Ever again. But what would be the funniest? <laughs> The, the funniest one that people have put out there is what? if Grady and Herter exchange jerseys. Because you could do Dick Herter. Oh. <laughs> so immature. Okay. Uh, I love it. Fox Dick. It's just kind of funny. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Funny. Yeah. So that's kind of it, right? Nothing yeah. else really works. I would have to do some research on. <laughs> Dick McGee is kind of funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Toronto is playing a lot of young guys. Uh, of course, RJ Barrett's been out too. Uh, his brother passed away, which is just so, so devastating. Younger um, brother. Mm, just so it's Tragic. beyond sad. Awful. So thinking of him and his family dealing with all that, that's just, I, I can't even fathom it. So um, he's out right now. And, you know, they, they still have. NBA players, no shit. Uh, yeah. They're just not playing good basketball right now. Um, and uh, Washington, they've been bad all year. Orlando, that's a tough one. I mean, this team plays defense. They've got size. I was looking this month because I'm, you know, I, I like to look at trends. I like to look at th- how Love things it. are going in a month. Orlando's number two in defensive rating in the month of March. Oh God. So they're shooting. Th- I, I want to know what their three point <laughs> shoot looks like. Yeah, it'll probably look better against the Kings. Yeah. But yeah, I mean. They've got guys that get after it, and they, they were here and had a chance to win. It was a double overtime game that the Kings won when they weren't shooting the ball well from mm-hmm. three and then hit all those threes against Sacramento. So uh, not easy by any means, but this is setting up an interesting stretch. You know, you, you can't look so far ahead of the schedule, but just a peek here with this road trip. You go Toronto in Washington mm-hmm. on Wednesday and Thursday back to back. Saturday Orlando, you come home Monday for a Philly team that's banged up right now. And then two massive games on the 26th and the 29th against the Dallas Mavericks. I mean that it's those are huge games. I mean they're all big but especially going head to head with Dallas. After. That's crazy because they're right behind you. Kings have a half game lead right now. I'm sure we all saw what Kyrie Irving did at the end of that game against the Nuggets Insane. too. Insane. Yeah, it's in in those. I mean, not to act like couldn't that happen against the Kings? No, it's about making big plays against the Kings and doing that all game long. And I mean, Kyrie's capable of that. Luca is obviously capable of that. How do you slow these guys down? You know, it's not. It can't just be like, oh, well, Keon Ellis has seen minutes now. It's no. Everyone's got to lock in and be in help and talk it up. And it's just that forty-eight minutes of engagement being there in all of these games is just huge. So the Kings are now in the sixth spot tonight, as it stands tonight. Dallas is behind them, a half game behind them. Phoenix is an eighth, a half game behind them. The Lakers are three games behind Sacramento in the ninth spot, but it is also worth mentioning for the Lakers. They don't have a tiebreaker over the Kings because the Kings swept them this year for nothing. The Warriors lost at home to the Knicks. They are five and five in their last 10 games, and they are four games behind the Kings in the 10th spot, Houston on the outside looking in right now, mm-hmm. but they won five in a row. 
three games behind the Warriors. Oh, okay. It's tight. It's tight in the yeah. West. And also, we mentioned all the, t- the, the teams behind Sacramento. The Kings are two games behind the Pelicans for fifth. And they are three games behind the Clippers, who have lost a couple in a row, including a home game to the Hawks yesterday. So... Crazy. It's a crazy wild time. Um, one other thing in our final thoughts, Morgan. Damanis yeah. Sabonis. Yeah. We had a chance to catch up <gasps> with him in a very brief conversation. We're going to put that up on our YouTube channel. Our boss at NBC were like, hey, Sabonis is available for 10 minutes. He's doing some promotion for great clips for March Madness. And it's one of those tours where he's doing multiple spots. We typically don't like doing short interviews. Mm-hmm. We like we had De'Aaron in our studio with Rissé for two hours. We like having long form stuff, but it was also like it is a bonus. We can get some content out of it. So anyway, I think it was like less than ten minutes. Whatever, it, there was some good stuff in it. So we're gonna put that out uh, in audio form and on YouTube later this week. Love that. What were you pointing at, too, Morgan? The super chat. Oh, thank you so much You're for the welcome. reminder, Morgan Reagan. Super chat, party to end the night. So many, and thank you. Wow. I and know. also to the people that are still here in the chat, like Boost is here, your favorite, <laughs> Queef69. You like to always... My that. favorite. Yeah, yeah. Matthew, Curtis, Joe, Hacks, appreciate it. Gothen, Baby Cakes. Uh, ben, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for becoming a Deuce and Mo supporter. Fernando donating 20 bucks saying, Hey, Mo, my daughter Ruby was so happy to meet you today. She asked if you saw her dance during halftime, LOL. She loves watching replays of Night Chat. Tell her I did, and she did amazing. Uh, that Yeah, the halftime group crushed it tonight. Mm-hmm. So congrats, Ruby. Uh, Geeky Nana, big supporter, donated five bucks saying, thank We you. need a Monk Arena chant. What would be the Monk <laughs> Arena chants, Malik? Hmm. I don't know, man. The The crowd, it was so loud tonight on some of those dunks. Even the one he had after the foul. Oh, he threw it down, my that was sick. God. Shout out to our friend Oleg, donating five bucks. A win is a win. I'll take it. Love it. Yeah, we will all take Thank it. Thank you. Uh, Don James, still a member 20 months in a row, saying, why did Keegs look so bum lighting the beam? Yeah, it's funny. We mentioned that on TV tonight. Keegan Murray li- lit the beam. He hit the button, and he just like, boom. I saw one more angle. Yeah, and it wasn't as bad. It wasn't. It wasn't as bad as the angle that we had. It was just like okay, okay. <laughs> Shout out to Jesse donating ten bucks. Appreciate that. Saying all the big three talk reminds me of the Spurs during their championship runs. Who were their big three? Duncan Parker and Ginobili, a center, a point guard, and a guard off of the bench. Yeah. Love, I, I thanks, Jesse. Love those parallels. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. That's championships, you know. Mm. Yeah. No, th- those teams had some great role players too and G- Ginobili was spectacular I mean he could have been a starter and he started some in his career but he was so awesome for them off the bench uh, Christopher Walker donates two bucks appreciate that Christopher saying Monk is the best dunker uh during games by far damn well, he's one of the best in-game dunkers in the league for sure thanks Christopher you see the, how about the one Anthony Edwards had tonight on John Collins, oh. who left the game with a head contusion after the dunk. He left the game with a head contusion, and Anthony Edwards uh, said after the game it was probably his best dunk of his career, and he dislocated his finger. There's nothing like a nasty dunk. There's nothing Love like it. it. Nothing like it. You got some final thoughts, Mom? Final thoughts? Um, A win's a win. And love finishing this homestand on a win, no matter how you have to get it. Um, I think we kind of know what this team is, where they're at. So against any team, good or bad, it's not about being like, oh, you don't know what team you're going to get. I think the expectations to have is expect this team to bring the effort every single night and that the effort is elevating to another level what it feels like in the last couple of games even in that loss against the Knicks it was just a different type of physical effort even that's where I'm going to expect things to keep growing to keep going at the end of this season my final thought tonight this is a bittersweet for me because it's my final scheduled pre and post game on NBC Sports California this year But I got so many more opportunities this season. I had so much fun working with Morgan, Mike Bibby, Draper for a couple of games too. I feel so 
fortunate that I got this opportunity. And I, I know we say this a lot, but we mean this. This podcast and the community that's been formed around it has led to us getting these opportunities. Hands down. And so thank you for allowing us to be part of your lives and to watch us after games and hang out with us, win or lose. And we hope that you have fun along the way. But yeah, I just had so much fun doing it. You know, I'm born and raised in Sacramento. My dream was to work on a Kings broadcast and I got the chance to do it a lot this year. Um, so, and you might get more, it's just scheduled wise is yeah. what is all you have until obviously playoffs too. But, um, but yeah, no, hey, look, I look at the schedule. My name's not on it. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not there. And it's, it's by the way, it, you, you have a ton of great time. I mean, Chelsea Gray is going to be mm. on a ton. You got some analyst role I, work. I do. Mike Bibby. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot, right? No, so it's, it's a lot, It but just, yeah, dudes, I had so much fun. I even, you know, for you and I, I think we have so much fun trying to grow in any category yep. that we do podcasts, play by play in color. And then for us to actually get, it was like Keon Ellis minutes, you know, where we got more and more opportunities where we actually got to like shine together and, um, just yeah so much fun and and thank you for everyone there's been so much love in all the comments we see them all um so just thank you thank you for always pushing that out there too especially when you tag nbc appreciate all the love the malik monk of the king's broadcast wait that's that paper note. is blank that's so weird <laughs> <laughs> uh, we appreciate you guys so, so, so much. We'll drop the Sabonis interview this week, and we'll be back live again Tuesday night following the Kings and the Raptors. We love you guys, but we got to go. You all have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you for everything. See ya! Deuce and Mo, Deuce and Mo, Deuce and Mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce and Mo, Deuce and Mo. Deuce and Mo, the podcast that you know. Deuce and Mo.